Welcome back, everyone. And uh, welcome to our brand new studio for Politics Today, right here on Channels Television. Let's get back to the conversation, everyone. There are fears about what is going to happen in 2019. Preparations, the issues of security, the interplay between the political parties. Are we really ready? If you play back in your mind on what we saw in 2015, where we had most of the, uh, the candidates signing peace pact and saying whatever happens, or whatever the outcome of the elections, we will take it and there will be peace. Can that happen this time around, let's get back to the conversation. We've been uh, speaking with the former Director General of the Institute of Peace and Conflict Resolution, Professor Oshita Oshita, from our Abuja studio. Now, joining him is an election observer. Mr. Samson Itodo is also the Executive Director of Yerga Africa. Thank you so much for coming on the program. And also, we've been talking about security in the northeastern region of the country. President Buhari was in Brno State, and we have a lawyer, someone from that region, and a member of the APC, Mr. Daniel Buala. Thank you so much, Mr. Buala, for coming on the program. Perhaps let me take you on on the issue of security in that region, especially the killings in Metele. Uh, Mr. Buala, uh, are we ready for the election considering that kind of situation? People have raised concern that those kind of killings must be uh, dealt with before we can go into the elections. Right. I will say we are ready for the election, even though we are not unaware of the fact that uh, as election draws closer, we are going to fight enemies from within and without. The enemies from without are the insurgents. They are those who are out and are against democratic values and principles and have, in fact, said that elections should not be held in the country. Enemies from within are individuals who are going to be motivated or instigated by politicians to create chaos and all kinds of problems in order to undermine the outcome of election. One, speaking as one from the Northeast, I've had the privilege of traveling more than twice this year to the Northeast. And I can tell you, there has been a relatively, there, relatively there has been peace in that part of the region. The recent setback by the military, if you ask for my opinion, I will assume that it is probably a problem of counterintelligence, that we may have had a slack in, in that, in that, in that uh, sense. But in a nutshell, we really have to up our game as a government, as a people, as stakeholders, and as voters. Because 2019 is pivotal to the progress of democratic values in the country. In a case where videos are appearing of soldiers who are sort of protesting the kind of treatment they are, uh, treatment they are getting on the battlefield, their fears about the kind of obsolete... Uh, uh, equipment they are using. Those are some of the accounts on the video that you will see online. And the president said that you must end the Boko Haram threat in the country. Is, is, is that enough? Or you think that the president needs to do more as the uh, commander-in-chief? I'm, I'm not sure I heard you very well because of the uh, network problem. But because you mentioned president and doing much, I would assume that you are directly talking about the responsibility of government to preserve lives and property. The Constitution is clear about that. And the responsibility of the government to preserve lives and property is not limited to the governance and without election. It covers every part and facet of our lives. And I want to tell you that the president is particularly concerned about this. You recall not long ago that a, I think a billion dollars or so was voted for that fight to be able to buy Tokano and a, a lot of military hardware to be able to contain them. The president is working. But then, all of us need to put our hands on decks. We must, as human beings and citizens, provide intelligence for the uh, intelligence agencies and the security agencies to be able to work. No nation survives fight against insurgents without intelligence information from the members of the public. All right. What was the thought there? Uh, let me go to our Abuja studio where Samson Itoda since joined us. He's an election observer. From what you have observed, Samson, are we ready for this election in the first place? Uh, conduct uh, is on one hand, security on the other hand, and what INEC is doing, are we ready? And thank you very much, Cheryl. I think the Commission has uh, expressly told Nigerians that they are very ready um, for the 2019 elections. Um, but there are a couple of concerns. Um, first, if you look at the state of the amendments um, that are yet to be assented by the President, the National Assembly has transmitted 
um, the bill to the president and it's currently before the president. Uh, we know for sure that um, the amendments in that bill that border on the integrity of the 2019 elections and it's important for the president um, to expeditiously assent to that bill because um, there are grave implications. First, on the use of the card reader, also the legality of INEX guidelines that it issues for elections, because we know that one of the innovative and very laudable amendments to, um, to the Electoral Act as passed by the National Assembly is to confer legality on the card reader and also um, confer legality of um, the I I guidelines issued by INEC, which is a, a direct response um, following the Supreme Court judgments in um, Wike and Peter, um, Dakuku Peter side in um, Umahi's case, as well as Shinkafi and Yarit case, where the Supreme Court was very, very clear that you cannot supplant um, the, the, the Electoral Act with um, the uh, um, guidelines of INEC. But if you come down to election security, there's just so much that needs to be addressed in the build up to the 2019 elections. Um, two cases in point. First, if you look at the Oshun elections where there were incidents of um, voter suppression by security agencies, particularly the police, because it's on record, and as someone who observed the elections where security agencies prevented voters from going to cast their vote, that's a dangerous trend that needs to be addressed, where you've got security agencies suppressing um, voters, and it's a, it's a great concern. The second is on the partiality and neutrality of our security agents. It's very, very important that they uphold the principles of transparency and accountability and democratic principles of state policing in the conduct of election operations. Um, I, I told you something happened in the by-elections in, in Bauchi, where I was um, a few weeks ago. A situation where the police, um, with contingents and using arms, um, uh, in show force on the day of elections and moving from one particular polling station to another, intimidating INEC officials is something that needs to be addressed. And it brings to the question the Interagency Committee on Election Security. Uh, I think that it's important that um, the security agencies and all stakeholders abolish these parallel lines of control when it comes to election security. INEC is a coordinating body for elections, and, and we need the security agencies need to cooperate, need to work more closely with INEC because if the commission does not have um, assurances from security that election materials and election personnel as well as the voters are going to be secured, then there are grave concerns right. on the integrity then, then, of the 2019 elections. Then, uh, Samson, then it brings me to a very critical one. A red flag from you, isn't it? Uh, considering the kind of uh, posture of politicians in this sense, when allegations of partiality is coming on the, uh, the security agents, are you afraid that that may be a big issue, considering what happened in 2015 when we saw the peace pact and the handshake that we saw between the major political parties? Are you afraid that there might be a breach on peace for this election? Um, I think there's palpable fear out there, no doubt. Um, first, it's even in the capacity of our security agencies to address any, um, a, any form of um, a instability or upsurge of, of violence. I, I think that our political parties, if you look at the party primaries, they're just an indicator on how they went. The fact that they were signposted with the level of violence, can you imagine that people were, we lost lives in just the conduct of party primaries. And we know that the outcome of that primary has evolved with several contestations, not just in court, but there's a lot of disaffection in the air and which will impact on the elections. And it's important that now that you've got the Peace Committee coming, um, being very, very active, that Nigerians really need to rise up and hold our politicians right. to account. If politicians actually sign a pact to say they will, they will uphold peace, then we as a people must hold them to, um, hold them to okay. account. Uh, our, our security agency also have a role to play. INEC also has a role to play. If there is no form of perceived injustice, then you wouldn't in any way have incidences where people okay. get to violence. Uh, uh, but it's important to put this out, that there has to be a country before elections. Absolutely. And so the country has to be peaceful and everyone needs to uphold the peace and maintain the peace and order if we're going to cast our votes uh, February 16th and March 2nd. Let, let's close the show now. Um, let, let me allow Professor Oshita, in 10 seconds, if you can give me your final thoughts on, on the, having peaceful election, and not that alone, the aftermath of it. 
what can we do and what must we be urgently looking at in 10 seconds, Professor Shita? Well, we must compel political actors to sign a court, peace accord, in normal situations, that will not, I mean, we will have taken that for granted, but let them sign the peace accord, and Nigerians will hold them to All the right. accords uh, that they will have signed. Okay, great. That, Thank you so much, Professor Shita. Mr. Buala, we are out of time. In uh, five seconds, if you can, what must we look at to make sure that we have peace in this election? Mr. Buala. Right. The ball players should encourage their followers to be low abiding and peaceful, knowing that if you are not satisfied with the outcome of the election, the court of the land will always right. give you a redway. Well, I must sincerely thank you, my guest tonight on the program, uh, Professor Oshita Oshita, former Director General of the Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution, and also Mr. Samson Itodo, the ED of Yaga Africa, and Election Observer, Mr. Daniel Buala, legal practitioner, member of the APC. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on the program today. That's our show for tonight, and welcome to our brand new studio, where we'll give you all the latest in the world of politics. That's our show. I'm Shion Kimale. Bye-bye.